Hello to you, I'm Jesse Johnson. This is Electricity, Basic Flying Saucer Technology, How to Build a Flying Saucer. You should know basic electricity. Nikola Tesla invented the electro-propulsion flying craft between 1891 to 1910 and had produced several flying, rough working models by 1915. Nothing fancy is needed to make construct or build a flying saucer, since everything needed to build one existed in, by, and in 1910 to 1915 technologies. Now let's begin, please. Number one. Number one, there are two electrical primaries, DC or direct current, and AC or alternating current. Number two, the DC direct current is in the form of high voltage, pulsed, high frequency, and put in front, top, or sides of the ship, firmly attached to the inside hull of the ship, and AC alternating current is put straight across from the DC in the rear, bottom, or sides of the ship. Number three, the DC draws in super ultra micro ether carriers, which are carrying super ultra micro helical tubes of force, one carrier per one tube of force. Number four, the direct current DC sends high voltage charge to the external electrical conductive hull of the ship. Number five, the AC current stops the tubes of force from passing through. Its high frequency pulses dissolves the tubes of force. The ether carriers are compressed and blocked from passing through by the high frequency. Number six, the tubes of force are dissolved in the conductors of the ship, which impart Parts momentum to the ship. Number seven, the AC and DC potentials rigidifies the ether. Now, the AC lets the rigidified ether through the back of the ship, but it does not let the ether carriers through the back of the ship. Number eight, the dissolved dissolved tubes of force imparts momentum to the ship at 90 degrees to the electric current and 90 degrees to the magnetic inductance. Number nine, the total ship saucer is saturated with ether, electric force, tubes of force, magnetic fields, etc., and moves as a non-conventional flying unit. Let's continue, please. As you can see, this drawing right here is a flying saucer, and the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We will start, and that's also B. This part right here, this part, this is B, this part right here, B, this part right here, with three segments, three segments. <coughs> B1, 2, and 3. B1 is a transformer. B2 is a capacitor. B3 is a spark gap. Number 1, the DC brush discharge. That's number 1 right here. The DC brush discharge is voltage, is high voltage, high frequency pulsed. Number 2, number 2 is an electromagnetic brush diverter. It has, it, it and <coughs> diverter. When this brush, the dotted line, Voltage, voltage, a uh, charge, brush, sends out. When this comes on, this electromagnet comes on, it pushes the brush that way. When this one comes on, it pushes the brush that way. We'll go to number three. This is a, number three is here, it's a Tesla pancake coil. It is a DC, a DC pancake coil with DC potential. With DC potential, high frequency pulsed. Now we'll go to number four. This here is a Tesla bulb, a Tesla solid aluminum polarization bulb of a type of force bulbs. It pol polarizes the tubes of force. Number five. Number five is the tubes of force. These are super ultra micro helical tubes of force. Number five. Number six is, the, is, is an electrical distribution system. All the electricity is sent first to this, this, this system, which distributes all the electric, 
electricity it needs to run the ship. Number six. Oh, pardon me, number seven. This here at the top of the, of the ship is a DC pancake, Tesla pancake coil. Pancake coil. It is a single terminal coil for lift off for, at the top of the ship or hovering. And the DC potential coil, these DC Tesla coils are reversible one fourth, one half, and one whole wavelengths for pancake coils. We'll go to number eight. Number eight is an electrical prime mover. An electrical prime mover is needed to help the alternator or the generator produce electricity. You can use hydrogen. Hydrogen is also used as a over unity device because hydrogen, uh, you can well never. That's a, that's, a, that's another story. Number nine. Uh, this is an alternator. Number nine. The the prime mover moves the alternator to turn around, and the alternator produces electricity, which sends the electricity to the number six, the electrical distribution system, and so forth. Number nine. Number, number 10, uh, pardon me, number 10 is the top hull. If you look at this straight horizontal line, it divides the top hull from the bottom hull. This is the top hull, number 10. Number 11, this here is an AC, AC, AC pancake coil, Tesla pancake coil. It is high voltage, high frequency. DC, AC, straight across from it. DC, AC, straight across from it. That's how it works. Now, number the, the AC compresses and blocks the ether carriers. The ether carriers, and it also blocks the tubes of force from going in the back, from going through. And it turns these tubes of force around and dissolves those tubes of force throughout the ship. Number number uh, number twelve. Even though the AC does not let all of those through, the ether carriers or the tubes of force go through, it lets the rigidified ether pass by. This is rigidified. Number twelve. Number thirteen. Number thirteen is the bottom hull. That's the top hull. Number ten. Bottom hull. Number thirteen. Number fourteen. Number fourteen here is the is the cabin, and the pilot. The pilot. Inside the cabin. Number 15 is the insulation. The cabin's electrical insulation. Insulation right here. It's The whole cabin is insulated. Number 16 is a counter-rotating plate because a flying saucer, the real form of them, they precess, they spin around and around to stop them from spinning. A counter-rotating plate is put inside the ship to make it uh, to, to equal out the forces so the, the system don't, the, the whole flying saucer don't spin. A, f a magnetic field, a magnetic field makes an electromagnetic field spins. That's why the saucer turns around and around. Now, let's see. Right, number 17 is an AC. Just like this is AC, this is AC. AC pancake coil. Number 8. Number 18, this is the pilot, this right here is number 18, is the pilot's navigation and control system of the whole ship, of the ship. This here is a pancake call. This is part of the power system to make the saucer work. On, the, on your uh, left is a pancake call and all of its necessary apparatus that goes to it. Right here is one of Tesla's uh, uh, methods for signaling, signaling which has uh, two primaries marked P1 and P2. And this here is possibly the origin of the title uh, given P2, given to the 1935-1938 New Mexico Field Flying Saucer Project that was run by Werner Van Braun. And it shows an oscillator system having two separate pancake coils tuned differently, running off a common rotary spark gap and dynamo. Rotary, rotary uh, spark gap and dynamo is right here. If one coil is tuned to one quarter wavelength and the other to a full wavelength, 
they will comprise a DC brush circuit and a high frequency AC circuit, respectively. And the AC circuit could be run at all times on the bottom and the rear, with the brush ADC being activated at the top to lift off for lift off and hovering, and to the front to go forward or turn. We stopped at 18, we'll go to 19, 20, and 21. Now, uh, uh, number 19 is the ether carriers. Ether carriers carry the super, ultra, micro, helical tubes of force. Once the DC super high powered voltage, super high frequency DC comes on, <coughs> it affects the ether itself. The ether, it, it, the ether is affected by this powerful, that's one of the ways to affect the ether. One of the ways to affect the ether is using super powerful electrical force. And it creates these, the, the carriers, and it sucks in the carriers through the DC. Sends these, sends the carrier, the, for, the tubes of force, the tubes of force and the carriers straight to the back. And the AC circuit, AC pancake circuit, Dissolves, hit, sends the uh, uh, tubes of force back, and which is number twenty-four. Number twenty-four sends the tubes of force back and dissolves uh, these tubes of force throughout the ship, and the and and the, the the tubes of force dissolves and it enters all of the conductors. Number twenty, number twenty dissolves tubes of force entering the conductors, enters all of the conductors of the ship. Number seven is a D, is the top of the ship with its DC coil, and number fourteen is the um, is the uh, cabin and the and the pilot, and twenty one is the dissolved tubes of force. Dissolved tubes of force is number twenty one. And the ship itself, the direction of the ship, is 90 degrees to the electric field and 90 degrees to the to the uh, to the magnetic inductance. Oh yes, number four right here. Number four. Number four is a Tesla solid aluminum polarization of force bulbs. It pol polarizes the tubes of force as the tubes of force enters the DC, along with one, uh, with with the uh, uh, tubes of force and the uh, 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 ether carriers enters the enters the ship. These polar number fours, number fours right here, polarizes <coughs> these bulbs. Polarizes the, the tubes of force. Polarizes them. This is here is a Tesla bulb. This illustration is from July 11, 1934, and it shows several of the special solid aluminum Tesla bulbs. These are the aluminum bulbs right here. Solid aluminum. Solid aluminum. And uh, of which Tesla stated in 1940 that no longer required a vacuum. The current is placed on the beams. This is the beams right here. All of these beams right here. These are beams. is placed on the beams by means of a ring-shaped electrode. These are the ring-shaped electrodes. Ring-shaped electrodes. Ring-shaped electrodes near each bulb. Near each solid aluminum bulb, and is fed with currents from the coils, from the coils right here, from these coils. Let's continue, please. Now, since we stopped at number twenty-one, we we'll start at number twenty-two. Number 22 is, right here, number 22, is that is when the DC current is on, the DC current, the DC charge, the DC brush charge, number one, number one is on, number one is on, space itself becomes conductive. It is rendered conductive itself. Rendered conductive itself. And, it, and the ether itself, the ether itself is stretched. Is stretched and rare factioned, rare factioned, and this DC pulls in and makes the ether produce ether carriers, ether carriers, which contains one super ultra micro helical tube of force each, each one. DC, AC, DC at the top for hovering and so forth, AC at the bottom.
Now, the tubes of force, as the tubes of force come in through the DC, they are stopped and blocked and dissolved and made to go in other directions throughout the, 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 the conductive parts of the total ship hull and everything else. Good evening. Same the here with the DC here. The, the DC closed. allows Restrooms and computers <clears throat> shut down. The, the, the ether carriers to pass through. Buenas the AC tarde. stops it. The, the AC stops it and sends and dissolves the tubes of force right here and allows number 20, the DC, the, the, uh, tu the dissolved tubes of force, to enter the conductor. The number 11 is an AC pancake coil that blocks and compresses the ether carriers and stops them, but it allows the ether, the ether itself, rigidified, to pass through. To pass through. And number 25 here is when all of this is taking place, all of this superpower uh, uh, charge. An electrical force creates a corona. It also creates repelled air envelope. A repelled air, this dotted line, a repelled air envelope where the air never touches, never touches the hull because there's so much force making it, pushing it away, repelling it away. I want to thank everyone for listening and watching. And <clears throat> please have a very, very, Good day.